Hello Ratbags, it's Joe Plays Games with a retraction video today, also taking a look at the patch notes. What am I talking about? <sighs> Yesterday I done a video saying Atlas one month later. I gave all the reasons, I showed you all the ways that it's improved from the disastrous launch of Atlas, how much it had gone at great lengths to show that it can be a game with potential. Part of that was making the game easier to get into, easier to get hold of a ship, and so you're actually being a pirate rather than just some generic survival grinder. Now, Atlas is in development for the long haul. We're only at the start of a two-year early access program. But I'm literally about to delete this video after a patch came out a few hours after I posted this. Now I'm not making a knee jerk reaction and I'm not just spitting my dummy out or my cutlass just because of one update. But the latest PC patch updates that have gone into Atlas overnight are absolutely horrendous. So I'm going to read through them and then I'm going to try and explain or go through in my head why they've made these changes. I did get a little bit salty as well with the community manager Jat and he sent me a DM as well. So hopefully they know that this is really pissing off a large majority of the player base again. To cut it all short, they've made everything harder again to grind. You've got to grind for resources much more than you used to. And it's taken it away from being easier to get into the seas and being a pirate or being a company guy. And instead you're just running around an island hitting loads of rocks or trying to find the resources to build defences. And that's not what the majority of people who play Atlas want. And we will just take a look at some of the tweets and replies and you'll see how vocal people are against these changes that happened. But more importantly than that, these changes that happened basically were put in without real explanation of reasoning why. We're gonna have lots of moments like these. There were lots of moments like this with Ark Survival Evolved where they nerfed and buffed things and sometimes it levels out over time. But we need context when you make changes like this. So let's go from the start anyway. Server optimizations to increase performance by 5%. Yay! Optimize transition data cleanup in Redis to avoid a DB bloat. Server listing for non-Atlas servers has been rewritten and will list non-Atlas servers immediately. Fountain of Youth aging changes. Now, if you don't know, the Fountain of Youth was implemented into the game. Everyone's been basically growing old and looking like a raisin. This video perfectly highlights the problems with having to go and reduce your age all the time by UNK. Go and give him subscribe if you want to see some more content. I don't know how much content he's really doing on Atlas, but it really does show off exactly the problems. This was the cue for getting into the Fountain of Youth when they implemented it. It only appears a few times in certain Golden Age ruins, and as you can see, Look at this, it is absolutely mad what was going on. He's literally just killing people as they were trying to queue up to get into it. That is not a good gameplay mechanic. That is not something we really want in a game. There's got to be a different way. I'd rather have the Fountain of Youth, maybe a recipe that you can find in all sorts of places, and then maybe you've just got to get the hard to find resources to make it a potion that you could then drink. You could then sell that at Open Sea. That is a much better gameplay mechanic than actually going to a Fountain of Youth and queuing up with this mess of a bullshit thing going on. Anyway, back to the patch notes. The Fountain of Youth is now only available if you're over 90. Fountain of Youth is now available on two random Golden Age servers. Old Age debuff has been reduced by 50%. Fix the bug which made it so that beds and boats would not display on the map if they weren't in a company. Fix the bug with the Drake which allowed it to phase through structures. Fix the bug which allowed players to have more beds on their boats than permitted. This is a retroactive fix. So now we get to the main part and this is where I'm really, really pissed off and that's why I've been tweeting like a madman this morning. When you do balance changes, it's important to communicate that to the people that are playing your game. Right now, Atlas, as I showed you in my yesterday's video, has got a fair amount of people playing it. Despite all the criticism, despite the bad launch, it's still got on its high days a good over 35,000 people on it on a daily basis. That is fantastic numbers. There really aren't that many games that have player bases over 30,000 people in this genre, in this type of game on Steam. So when you do do things that are drastically going to affect how you play the game, whether it be balancing resources or making things harder to get hold of, you probably need to communicate that better than just some bloody patch notes. 
So what they've done is they've increased the explosive damage to stone structures by 2.5%. Increasing seed structure damage to stone structures by 60%. So, so far that's not bad. You know, I've got no problem making it a bit easier to get into stone structures. It means people have got to be more creative in how they build. They may have to space their resources out more or make sure that they've got a real good structure so they don't get raided. And then the next one's not bad either. Wood land structure has been buffed to provide better resistance to siege weapon types by 40%. Wood land structures have been buffed to provide better defences against all non-explosive siege damage types by 50%. Wood in Atlas is a real, real shit commodity. I kid you not, in the days of Ark, you would go from thatch to wood to stone, and as quickly as you could get, you'd get up to metal. But in Atlas, we've literally just been going straight to stone because thatch is just not worth the time and wood is more expensive or just as expensive gathering the resources to build it than it would be just getting stone. So they needed to balance that and make it easier to get something going in wood to make it that mid structure, that mid tier that it's meant to be. So all good. Glad they've done that. Glad they've buffed it up and made it more attractive to build stuff out of wood. But here's the crux, here's the problem. They've made stone structures harder to get hold of now. Stone structures now need metal, they also need organic paste, and so you're gonna to need to get loads of fiber and sap to craft the actual paste in a mortar and pestle. Now that one sentence, you're thinking, what is the big deal? If you've not played Atlas much, or you've not really been too aware of what's going on, that basically adds a whole host of new gathering that you've got to do for stone structures. That makes the grind even worse than it was. Now, you don't have to exclusively build out with stone, of course. And as we've seen, they've made stone much easier to break into. But stone is obviously still going to be better than wood structures. But right now, they've tipped it the other way, where wood and stone were pretty much exactly the same in terms of costs. They've made wood stronger but they haven't actually made the stone that much stronger either and that's the massive problem with this update and they've called it a minor update and they just dropped it without really any talking about what was going on the reasoning why or the meta fat structures have had their crafting costs reduced by three times npc mounted on puckles are now invincible so we'll get through to that but i do want to go over this a little bit more i've played official pvp for a month now and it's pretty much all i've done in atlas Breaking into stone bases is no easy feat. If you can line up a cannon from a ship, you can break into enemy bases and it can take a good few shots, but it is a viable way to do it. If someone's built their base well inland and it's well protected from the sea, it is very hard to break into their bases unless you've got a big abundance of explosives. So I'm pretty pleased they've made it easier to break into bases. But I don't think that means they should also then make it harder to build them stone structures. People are going to end up getting wiped really quickly and now they won't be able to rebuild. Or if they do rebuild, it's going to be in wood, which is nowhere near as strong as stone. Even with the buffs the wood has had, it's still going to be something that people won't necessarily want to build out of. They're still going to go and try and build out the strongest thing they can, which is stone at the moment. And this is the massive problem. This is what exactly the criticism for Atlas is still there. And it's going to get worse if they make changes like this. They're making it into a grinding game again, rather than a pirate game. Now, this is a big argument, and this probably calls for a bit more conversation. But at its heart, I think most people want Atlas to be a pirate game. They don't want it to be an arc grind game. However, in MMOs and big open world survival games, we do realize there is a lot of grind. You can't just have billions of structures up within the first few days and you can't have the best ships in the first few days. I totally get there has to be balance, but people are still playing Atlas like it is Ark Survival Evolved. People are still building these mega crazy honeycomb bases all on land and putting all their trust in that. I assumed that I would be making my ship my base that i would get myself a galleon and that galleon would go everywhere and we'd have a fleet of them and certain galleons would be for resources other galleons or other ships would be for attack and we'd almost live on the sea but when i actually started playing the game i realized how stupid that was because you need to get somewhere to build the shipyards you need land and you need to protect that land so this really does hurt and harm pvp the most 
On PVE, you can make do with thatch structures, particularly now they're much cheaper to make. You can make do with wooden structures knowing that it's going to be good defense against any other type of PVE creatures. But none of these changes offer PVE. They're really geared towards the PVP crowd and no one is happy about it. Now I think I get on well with Jack. Over three years of working and playing on Ark on my channel, I have come to have a few interactions with him and I know he's a stand up guy. He's been tweeting talking about another issue about connecting to the game which is not really relevant at the moment. But as you can imagine, there is a lot of people upset and pissed off about the changes. I could literally go through these tweets all day long and you will find lots and lots of problems and lots and lots of complaints with people talking about stone. I think this person, Jen Swinney, has expressed it the most. None of us are mad at you personally, Jack. I think we're all running high on emotions after feeling like we expressed our opinions. You all seem to listen. Then bam, did the opposite. It's an MMO. It should be grinding items, blueprints, etc. Not structures. And that's exactly right. MMOs are based about gearing up your character, about gearing up your experience levels and making your character the best it can be. When you add that to a pirate game, then obviously you've got to make sure your ships and the stuff that helps support your ship building is going to be that same way. And when you think about the grand vision of Atlas, where they want people, and when you think about the grand vision of Atlas, where they want people to be in these big companies and have politics and have government, then you do realise that things can't be as easy to get hold of. But there are still way too many other areas they should be looking at right now, rather than trying to balance the PvP side. Anyone who's got any sort of very light defences, stone defences, whatever it is, is going to get rolled over almost immediately by bigger companies now. Instead of being able to build back up or get yourself somewhere very quick, you're now going to have to spend double the amount of time gathering them resources. And it won't be worth it because when you have gathered them resources, it's still not going to be as strong. Personally, I think one or the other would have been sufficient. Either make explosive damage to stone or structure damage to stone, that's fine. But leave the actual costs alone. Or add another tier. That's what someone else said on Twitter as well. Put reinforced stone structures as the next tier up. That includes stuff like metal. And it would give you a bit more protection over stone. There's just no connection, there's just no explanation about the meta, why they feel these changes need to happen. If they could demonstrate and explain why people are maybe abusing the system or it was never their intention to have everyone been building up in stone all the time, I think that goes a long way. But by literally only posting it in some patch notes, not explaining any of the thinking behind it, it leaves everyone feeling like they're just not listening again. Anywho, ships can only receive damage from collision encounters with other ships if they're the same or great or weight class. Deals with cheesy cheap ramshackle builds to sink bigger boats. That was a fantastic part of the game. I'm not so pissed off about this sort of stuff. This kind of changes will come and go over the next two years. But there generally was a tactic if you keep coming up against bigger companies that always had galleons or brigs, you could go and do some serious damage to them with some sort of raft or sloop. But there you go, that's what's happening with ships, they've changed it around. Creatures, the Drake balance adjustments mean that it's got 10% less health, 10% less damage and double stamina costs for using fire breath. Magical tames can no longer be used in boss fights and will be destroyed when used inside the dome. Again, that seems like a bit of a bizarre thing. It's quite hard as it is getting hold of a dragon or a drake. And they've pretty much nerfed it, so the only way you can realistically take on some of the bosses like the Kraken is by using cannons on your ships. I think that one will come back to bite them on the arse a little bit. I think people are going to be a bit pissed off that they can't use certain creatures. There was a lot of good stuff added to the game in the last couple of updates before this. While I was away packing, moving house, I just about gave you information beforehand showing you the live stream where they showed off some of the future content coming. There were so many good points and that's what really prompted me to take another look and really give a bit more of what I thought supportive review of Atlas. But right now, honestly, I do feel like just deleting it because it just feels so fake. Now I'm not gonna because updates come and go. And who knows, in two days time, maybe they'll revert back. But it just shows there's no real leadership at the moment in terms of where the game is going and there's no real general roadmap. 
They seem to just be making knee-jerk reactions with no explanation about what's happening. This is all part and parcel of early access. This is exactly what you sign up for when you buy an early access game. Changes are going to happen. You're not going to always be happy with them. But what we do need is clarification. When you make changes that you know are going to affect a big, big part of your community, or it certainly will piss off a lot of people, you need to put it in context and explain and demonstrate exactly how that will work. And I just don't think they're doing a very good job of it. Let me know how these changes affect you if you're playing on official PvP. To me, it really is the death knell. I've got a private server being made up at the moment. I'm going to be joining up with GG Fizz, Frasonis, TLC, Pilgrim Project, Artex Gaming, and a bunch of other great content creators in having a 4x4 grid. Because right now, that is the best way to play this game on a private server. If they keep making changes like these, it's just going to put off people from playing on the actual official servers. It's just way too hard to build up. And there's just no real balancing being made as they go along. It all just seems to be going from one extreme to the other. Agree, disagree, pop your comments in the description down below. So there we go, that's the situation with Atlas. I really hope they change and adjust this. It doesn't need to too much. I think go one or the other. You've got the new bounty system coming in, you've got the submarine, you've got the guillotine, you've got so many different things coming in Atlas. I just don't want it to be ruined by more knee-jerk reactions and just changing things that don't necessarily need changing right now or at least explaining stuff when they're going to make these changes. Let me know what you think about the game right now if you're playing it and I'll see you rat bags for another one very soon.